Hey everyone, um, this is my explanation for problem 1b slash 2d of round 736. So this is called integer half friends, unlike me. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so as always, I'm going to assume you've read the problem. If you haven't read the problem yet, then definitely read it and think about it by yourself for a little bit before you watch this video because I'm about to explain it to you. And you should always at least think about a problem before looking at the editorial. So yeah, um, I'm just going to talk about it right now. So um, basically the important condition for a subarray to be a friend group is we need to make sure all of these adjacent elements, like the diff, okay, wait, how do I say this? So if we have like some numbers like AI, like AI plus one, all the way to like AJ, where this represents some subarray in our current array. This represents a friend group if um, and only if ai mod m is equal to ai plus one mod m. And like they're all equal to each other, mod some integer m. It's like aj mod m, where m has to be at least two, because if m was equal to one, then like this problem would just be pretty stupid. That since the answer would just always be n, because any number mod one would just be zero. But yeah, um, so yeah, this problem seems like, the way you solve this problem is that you realize that this structure over here isn't very helpful. It doesn't really, in other words, like, it's hard to tell like what information, like how do we like pick some M or like how can we determine some M such that it maximizes the length of a subarray? because m is like kind of a variable because we have like we have like these values of ai ai plus 1 and like so on these this is like already a variable these are this is like already variable that we have to care about and there's just like a lot of information that is hard to maintain like this however an important um property of like numbers mod m is that if we want um there a number mod m to be equal to um, like another number mod m. So in other words, if we want their um, remainders to be equal, then notice that um, I'll just we can look at any two adjacent numbers. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna look at ai and ai plus one. If we want ai and ai plus one to be in the same friend group, then we know that this quantity minus this quantity must equal to zero. Yeah. So like this number, so like this number mod m minus this number mod m must equal to zero. So if let's try to expand like the mod term a little bit, because we can represent like ai mod m as like some integer k times m plus the remainder of this plus the remainder itself as like let's just say it's a, and then it's like minus some some like other integer where it's like. Uh, L, I don't know, L times M plus B is equal to zero. Or not equal to zero, but um, we know like we can, okay. We can represent this AI can be represented like this and AJ, no, no, an AI plus one can be represented like this. And A is going to be equal to AI mod M and B is going to be equal to AI plus one mod M. And we know that since this quantity is equal to zero, we know that this implies that a minus b has to equal to zero. So um, this we can basically transform to just saying km plus a minus ln minus b. a minus b is just equal to zero. So this basically turns into km minus ln. So in other words, what this means is that um, we can reword a property of a friend group as if um, there exists some integer m that divides this difference of ai and ai plus one. So what I mean by this is um, because we want all these numbers to be equal to each other, we can just think of um, we can just subtract ai and ai plus one, it's like ai minus ai plus one, and we can also do like ai plus one minus ai plus two, and like etc. And the important thing about this um, like difference array is that this tells us um, 
how we can like reword this property. Instead of saying like some m, some like arbitrary m, if we um, take the difference array and like translate a friend group subarray to this sub to this difference array over here, all the, all we have to um, be careful of is that there exists some integer m greater than equal to two, such that for all of these quantities, let's say for example this quantity can represent as like a times m, um, yeah a times m. And then over here is like b times m where a and b are like some integers and it's like c times m and like whatever all we have to do is we have to maintain the fact that there exists some m at least two such that we can represent each like number in this difference array in this form and this is equivalent to saying okay well all these numbers are divisible by some m and this m is shared this is in other words we want to check whether there exists a common divisor among all of these numbers in the difference array. Common divisor. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? We can use a GCD function to figure out um, whether a possible m exists. Because the GCD function will tell us, um, if we take the GCD of like any, like some set of numbers, like, uh, I don't know, like x, y, z, whatever, then if the GCD is at least equal, greater than or equal to 2, then there will exist some m greater than or equal to 2 that will satisfy the subarray. And so this is the important condition. Once we create the difference array, we want to find the longest subarray that has a GCD of at least equal to 2. And the way we can solve this is we can build a segment tree. So like we basically take this difference array and um, because these numbers can be negative, like a negative number, multiplying a number by negative one doesn't affect the divisibility, right? So we really just want to take the absolute value of all these numbers. And then after we basically take the absolute value of these differences, and then we build a segment tree on it. And that allows us to query a range, like the GCD of a range in log n time. And so once we like build that segment tree, we can do two pointers where we can iterate on every, um, left boundary of a certain subarray and then on the right pointer we just keep on increasing this right pointer until the um gcd range of our current like range um goes to one because we know that adding a number to a range can only decrease the gcd it can never increase the gcd if that makes sense um because gcd is a greatest common divisor like adding a number will never make the common divisor bigger because it has to be a common divisor among like the previous numbers in the first place. So we can just use two pointers and then like apply segment tree. And the implementation for that is actually pretty standard. So I'm definitely going to be linking my implementation in the description. So if you're unfamiliar with two pointers or segment trees, then go and check them out. But yeah, that's how I solved problem 1b of this round. And to go quickly go over the complexity of a solution, um, I believe it's, how do I, how do I say this? Okay, so we, it's two pointers, right? So for each like pointer that we check, um, we, we want to, we make like roughly n, like an order of n queries. And for each query, it takes log n time um, times like, um, times like the GCD, times like how long it takes to calculate the GCD of two numbers, which is roughly log n time as well. So it's like, it's roughly this much. You can actually reduce like this constant to O of one if you use a sparse table in second segment tree, but it doesn't really matter. Like both, like the, um, the, um, time limit is like generous enough and the bounds are like small enough to where n log squared n like will probably be fine but yeah if this is how you solve this problem woohoo that was a really bad outro but whatever <laughs>